In the 13th century, we see in the writings of the papal bulls the identification of a new class of people called the infidel. The infidel was originally meant to refer to the Moors or to the Muslims. It was later implied, applied to indigenous peoples, people who did not worship the God of the Christian church. And we created this class of infidels, the subhuman category of people. Now, this creation changed the justification for war because now instead of going to war because of a just war theory, now you could go to war based on your theological grounds. You were fighting the other. You were fighting the infidel. You were fighting this other entity, this subhuman category of people. And so it's out of this understanding of what's going on in the 13th century that in the 1400s we have the writings of the papal bulls saying things like invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue all Saracens and pagans whatsoever. Reduce their persons to perpetual slavery. Convert them to his and their use and profit. This papal bull, along with other papal bulls written between 1452 and 1493, collectively became known as what we call the Doctrine of Discovery. The Doctrine of Discovery is essentially the church in Europe saying to the nations of Europe, wherever you go, whatever land you find not ruled by Christian rulers, those people are less than human and the land's yours for the taking. This was literally the doctrine that allowed European nations to go into Africa, colonize the continent, and enslave the African people. They weren't fully human. This was the same doctrine that let Christopher Columbus, who was lost at sea, land in this new world that was already inhabited by millions and claimed to have discovered it. If you think about it, you cannot discover lands that are already inhabited. If you don't believe me, leave your cell phones, your purses, your car keys out in front of you. I'll come by and discover them for you. <laughs> that's not discovery, that's stealing. It's conquering. It's colonizing. Because to this day we refer to what Christopher Columbus did as discovery, it reveals the implicit racial bias of our nation, which is that people of color, Native Americans, are not fully human. This makes the doctrine of discovery a systemically racist doctrine that assumes the dehumanization of people of color. Now, the challenge with this doctrine is that over the years, it became embedded in the foundations of our nation. So in 1763, King George drew a line down the Appalachian Mountains, and he said to the colonists, that they no longer had the right of discovery of the empty Indian lands west of Appalachia. This upset the colonists. They wanted access to those lands. So a few years later, they wrote a letter of protest. In their letter of protest, they accused the king of raising the conditions of new appropriations of land. They went on in their letter to state that he has excited domestic insurrections amongst us and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers the merciless Indian savages. They signed their letter on July 4th, 1776. Literally 30 lines below this statement, all men are created equal, the Declaration of Independence refers to natives as merciless Indian savages. Making it very clear, the only reason our founding fathers used the inclusive term all men is because they had a very narrow definition of who was and who was not human. This, of course, makes our Declaration of Independence a racist document that assumes the dehumanization of people of color. Now, a few years later, our founding fathers wrote another document. They begin this document with the words, we the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. This, of course, is the preamble to the Constitution of the United States of America. However, in Article 1, Section 2, the section of the Constitution that determines who is and who is not included, who is and who is not covered by this Constitution, A, it never mentions women, it specifically excludes natives, and it counts black people as three-fifths of a person. So, literally, the Constitution was written to protect white landowning men. We have to stop for a minute and pause and wrap our heads around that. 
The purpose of the Constitution, as it was written, was to protect white landowning men. We act surprised today that women earn 70 cents to the dollar. This shouldn't shock us. The Constitution's working. We act surprised today that our prisons are filled with people of color. This shouldn't shock us. The Constitution's working. We act outraged that in 2010, the United States Supreme Court sided with Citizens United and ruled that corporations now have the same rights to political free speech as individuals, creating an open door for super PACs and unlimited donations to political campaigns. This should not shock us. The Constitution is doing exactly what it was designed to do. It is protecting the interests of white landowning men. Now, maybe you're thinking, wait, didn't we correct that? Well, about 100 years later, we passed the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment was meant to address Article 1, Section 2. It was meant to extend the right of citizenship to anyone born on this continent under the jurisdiction of the government. However, it did not give women the right to vote. They were still excluded. It did not include natives. We were still excluded. And even though it gave some rights of citizenship to a few former slaves, we cannot forget that Jim Crow laws were written after the 14th Amendment, that segregation was enacted after the 14th Amendment, that internment camps were enacted after the 14th Amendment, and we cannot forget that in 1970, we used the 14th Amendment in Roe versus Wade, and now we concluded that unborn babies aren't human, and therefore they can be aborted. The problem we have is our Constitution does not have a value for life. The value of the Constitution is for exploitation and profit, and the practice of the Constitution is dehumanization. This makes the Constitution of the United States a systemically racist document that assumes the white landowning male has the authority to determine who is and who is not human. A few years later, in 1823, there was a Supreme Court case, Johnson versus McIntosh. This is two men of European descent. They're litigating over a single piece of land. One of them got the land from a native tribe. The other one got the land from the government. They want to know who owned it. The case goes all the way to the Supreme Court. The court had to decide the principle upon which land titles were based. They concluded the principle was that discovery gave title to the government by whose subject or by whose authority it was made against all other European governments. And that title might be consummated by possession. They went on to use the doctrine of discovery to determine that natives who were here first but are less than human, we only have the right of occupancy to land, like a fish occupies water or a bird occupies air, and Europeans have the right of discovery to the land, and therefore they have the true title to it. This precedent by the Marshall Court, along with a few other cases during that era, created the legal precedent for land titles. This precedent and the doctrine of discovery were referenced by the Supreme Court as recently as 2005. This, of course, makes the United States Supreme Court a systemically racist court that to this day has legal precedent based on the dehumanization of people of color. 